Hello, hi everyone. My name is Michael Awole, a researcher and lecturer at the Obafemi Olorun University, Nigeria. Today, we are going to be looking at regression analysis. Regression analysis has been used very widely in literature among scholars. Uh, precautionary activities, which we are expected to carry out before we begin to subject our data set to further analysis, it's the first thing we're going to begin to talk about. So the next video that we're going to begin to see, and thereafter we're going to demystify how to carry out regression analysis and all other things around regression analysis. Just sit back and watch the video to the end. Cheers. So some related terminologies in um, to regression, things that we need to know before we begin to talk about regression analysis. Uh, regression analysis, like I said previously, is one of the tools uh, that we can use to, to analyze our data. And we're going to see how important this tool is today as we go on. And then we're going to see a brief about the uh, precursors to regression analysis. Okay, so that's fine. So now we are going to be seeing correlation. We'll see what correlation is. Mm -hmm. A statistic that measures the degree to which two variables move in relation to each other. When you have two variables, you want to use correlation to inspect whether there is any relationship between, I mean, uh, yeah, between the two variables. Even when you have more than one variable, you want to check whether there is any relationship as well among those variables. And even if, if relationship exists, to what extent? You want to see the significance. You want to see to what extent, how, how cordial, how close are those uh, uh, um, variables? How, how close are they to one another? In the same way, you have more than one variable, or more than two variables, rather. So now here, the correlation is usually measured like um, in terms of um, uh, in the neighborhood of zeros and ones, meaning that correlation is usually measured in uh, in between in the, in the neighborhood of zeros and ones, like I said. So a zero correlation indicates that there is no relationship between the variables. When you have a correlation that gives you 0 0.001, it shows that that is a minute relationship between those two variables. But when you have a, a correlation that is about 0 0.9 five or one that indicates that there's a perfect correlation between th the, those two variables so i'm going to come again couples move in relation to each other and these variables you ordinarily uh they are um, measured in between zeros and one so any value they, they, they usually follow i mean uh the values usually fall between zero and one we now say here that a zero correlation indicates that there is no relationship between the variables. So this is a pictorial representation of correlation. And one of the conditions here has to do with what you use uh, correlation to test. And what are you testing? You are testing uh, whether relationship exists between your variables or among your variables. Now, so here, this is a pictorial representation of correlation uh, coefficients which we have computed. This is what I did for one of, uh, one of my outputs of my PhD. This is a correlation between about 2010's variable and about 23 other independent variables. I have decided whether you pick up lower diagonal or upper diagonal, it is all the same. So for me, I decided to go for my lower, lower diagonal here, where I have all the values downward here. If you look at that pictorial representation, you also find out that there is an upper di a diagonal, which is already clean with the stuff there. But on top, you will see one, one, one throughout. That's where you have the unitary, where you have um, one variable against itself. And in that instance, it is a perfect correlation. So that is not what we are looking out for. We are looking out for between one variable and another. If you look at this one, a Y to Y here, variation, the first one, is telling you that there's a perfect relationship because that is a variable to itself. But we are concerned about the student whereby you want to compare a variable x1 say to another one x i mean to another one y which in this instance gives us 0 
So we're still going to uh, come back to that later, but let's move on so that we can see a few other things. Another thing you have to check before you carry out your regression analysis is to ensure that within your data, you do not have arc layers. The first one correlation was to check relationship among or between your variables. You have 65 in your data set. Maybe you have already gathered about 4,500 students that you have completed. And you have one that is still want to prefer to go for law and you just gain an admission to the university. So, and it's also completing your question. Yeah. So, that is an out layer. No value for them is to constitute error or to constitute um, uh, high variance for your analysis. And in that kind of thing, there are, there are measures to handling that. Most of the time, what people do is you knock it out. You exempt that particular data set in, I mean, uh, that particular data in your data sets. So that means it does not belong to that population. So such an observation is referred to as outlier. In simple word, like I said, it is extreme value. It is an extreme value. So it's a problem because many times it hampers our overall results. And this is a pictorial representation, the graph of outliers. If you look at this one here, the one to my left here, you can see that um, there are there are um, there are points concentrated on one side in one cluster. So this is a pictorial representation of outliers. Like I said, you can if you look at this very closely, you will agree with me that um, uh, yes, it is only one point that is outside that cluster. There is a cluster of these are points here. But there is another one which is outside that cluster. So that one, particular one uh, is referring to as an outlier. It's not in line with the rest of the data set. And then if you look at the other one or the other, hello, if you look at the other one here, you'll find out that a number of concentration of data set here as well, which are very related. We also have other ones there in their own world in, a, in an also separate cluster but we find out that their proportion is not at um, as high as what we have in the major data set here so you refer to these ones as well to your to the right hand side you refer to them as uh, uh, outliers outlier can be overfitting it can be yes <laughs> overfitting or underfitting we're still going to talk about that it can be above it may be a figure of values above the expected of the of figure below the expected so that's a form of outlier another point you have to take cognizance of is um a multicollinearity multicollinearity is also very important before you carry out your regression it is important for you to check that there's no multicollinearity among your variables and what are we saying what's multicollinearity when the independent variables are highly correlated we refer to them as a when they are highly correlated to each other then the variables are said to be multicollinear i'm going to come again when the independent variables i'm going to tell you or explain to you the more what independent variables are i think we have we, we did a bit of that but then we're still going to see as we go on so when these those variables are highly correlated, when like I said, highly correlation means when your correlation you computed a, cor a correlation um, statistic among your variables, and you find out you find out that your correlation is between 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. That is highly correlated. So it's now saying here that when the independent variables are highly correlated to each other or to one another, when you have many of them, then the variables are said to be multicollinear. multicollinear. And when you have multicollinearity in your data set, you cannot carry out regression analysis. Though it's possible for you to carry out regression analysis, but it won't, there, are, there are ways by which you have to eliminate those multicollinearity. So many types of regression techniques assumes multicollinearity should not be present in the data set. It is because it causes problem in ranking variables based on its importance. 
It also made jobs difficult in selecting the most important dependent variable. So these are some of the errors. These are some of the challenges. It can constitute problem by the time you want to decide on your model. So you, what you have to do is, uh, if there are two variables that are that are clashing, let me use that word. Yes, two variables that are that are uh, more or less like a tussling, you know, performing tussle within your variables. The best thing is to let one step down for the other. It's just like when you want to conduct an election, and then you now find out that some two people or three people within the same party they want to be, you know, they want to be, you know, there is there is tussle among them. So what they normally do for them within the same parties, why don't we just step down for one another now? Guys, we have stepped down so that we won't divide our votes. So the same thing is applicable here. You have to ensure that one of those, those variables that are clashing should step down for one another. But how do you determine which variable should step down? There is a way to doing that, which I'm still going to mention, and then which we are going to... Uh, Still experiment with about time we're doing our practice. So multicollinearity. Uh, this is the pictorial representation of multicollinearity. Is it like I said? Is a statistical phenomenon uh, in which two or more variables in the regression model are, de are dependent upon the other variables in such a way that one can be linearly predicted from the other with a high degree of accuracy. So this is what is happening here. If you look at that graph. That graph, that is what you have. The, the data sets are concentrated on one point, and you can such that you can easily draw a straight line. If you also have another data set again that you have you you put in a scatter plot like this, and you also find out that when you draw your straight line among uh, to pass through the data set, it's almost falling on the same path. So that is what we refer to as multicollinearity. Another thing you have to take cognizance of before you carry out your regression analysis is heteroscedasticity. Heteroscedasticity. When dependent variables variability is not equal across values of an independent variable, it is called heteroscedasticity. That is still a big word. What is that telling us? What that is telling us is that when your dependent variables, when the variance between your dependent variables is not equal. Okay, let me come down. What I'm telling you is that when the errors between your variables are not are not the same, not necessarily exact, when they are not within the same neighborhood, that is what it means. So that would generate what we refer to as heteroscedasticity. So when your data sets have this kind of an error, you cannot subject it to regression analysis. And that is why most people that do not take cognizance of some of these things, that do not carry out some of these tests, when they run their regression, their regression would mislead policymakers. And it could be dangerous, especially when it has to do with life. So that's why you have to carry out some of these tests before you uh, conclude on your model that you are trying to, uh, you are trying to build. Because the essence of this as, of a regression analysis is for you to uh, bring out a model which can be used to advise policymakers. As one's income increases, look at this example. The variability of food consumption will increase. That's that assumption that as you are getting more money, there's a, even a likelihood that your dressing will increase. I mean, it will improve rather. So as you are getting more money, there's a likelihood that the kind of food you eat, you were eating before, maybe in the past, you used to eat bread and akara. But now that you are a bigger boy, you prefer to go to where what do you where Mama Cars in Abuja? You prefer to go to Swiss Sensations in Lagos and a few other places like that. And maybe even your sleep may even be different. I was looking at the internet somewhere, I think a few days ago, and somebody was saying that uh, an accommodation is somewhere in the United States could go for $150,000 per night. And I was wondering, what kind of accommodation is that? And who are the people that will be living there? And I think I, I responded and I said, the 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 category of Oshkupi can easily afford that. So what that is said is that there's a likelihood that the, when you hand more money, that you want to increase your take. So another one is this: a poorer person will spend a rather constant amount by always eating inexpensive food. Do you get that? Somebody who is poorer, who is uh, maybe 
um, a cleaner in a place, he can all of a sudden uh, change his uh, standard of living. Somebody who is used to taking bread and beans, all of a sudden, can say, wait a minute, let me go to conference center and then have my lunch, where you'll be spending like 5,000 naira. You prefer to go spend by Gary and things like that. But the situation whereby you see somebody who is wealthy, somebody who is wealthy, and is now drinking Gary and granules, you know, it's not expected. So you'll be like, ah, what's happening here? You know, but in expensive food, look at this scenario. A wealthy person may occasionally buy inexpensive food, and at other times, eat expensive meals. And in that instance, you have to treat that first before you move on to um, implementing your regression models. So this is a threshold. You can also see another one below the threshold. Which means that the, the, you know there are a number of variants on the upward side, and there are another number of variants below the threshold. So when you have inconsistency among the errors generated, then it shows that there is a heterosedacity in your data set. And at that, you are not going to stop there. You have to fix it. But fixing it, we are still going to discuss that. The another test you are expected to carry out before you go for your regression analysis is to ensure that there is no overfit, overfitting or underfitting in your data set. When we use unnecessary explanatory variables, it might lead to overfitting. When you use some variables that are not likely to be relevant in your work, there is a likelihood that you are going to have this. You are going to have overfitting. And what is that telling us? Take, for example, you want to carry out, um, like the example we are already using in our practicals, uh, you want to know the the, kind, the mobile adoption, mo adoption of mobile phone among the particular set of people. And you are bringing in, you know, we already know some little variables in terms of, oh, oh what do you use the inter what do you use your mobile phone for? In terms of how many times do you, uh, do you sub in a week? Those are relevant variables. Um, what are the functions of your mobile phone? Can you do things? Can you do video on it? These are some of the relevant. How many log of woods can you carry? You can. Uh, you agree with me that that is out of the yeah. You must not include questions that will be out of context. So, fitting also means that you to perform better on the test set. Now, this is what we do in machine learning. This is a bit of machine learning, apparently. Now, in machine learning, what we normally do is we divide our data set into two. We give a certain percentage to training set. We give another percentage to test set. So the training set would use that training set to train our model. So when our model already understands the pattern of the data set, then you can then use that training set, that model, to begin to test your test data. So when you now fit your test data into the model and you are getting something close to that particular test, or you're getting exactly, then it shows that, oh, your, your model is doing fine. But in a situation whereby, um, your, your training set cannot fit the test set, then would say that it has overfitting. When, when, when your set are, when your, the models exaggerate, exaggerating, maybe you are supposed to have 2.5 and your model is giving you 2.8, 3.0, 4.5, 6.0. That means there's overfitting. The same thing is when it's giving you a value below that, you know that that's what we refer to as underfitting. So this is more or less like a pictorial representation of your data spread. We have the balanced area, which is the normal cells. Uh, the one in the middle, that's the balance. Uh, 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 you can see that uh, the, the data here, it's 
in between, the line could easily pass through a curve, you know, could easily pass through a curve, which is saying that it, so it can fit in between those the, the scattered data sets. But look, if you look at overfitting here, overfitting the one to your, our right, it's, uh, it can only fit in in a zigzag form. Why? Because the data is not stable. The data is not stable. It is not within the expected uh, cluster of that data set. But then if you look at underfitting as well, the same thing is also applicable. Even when you draw a straight line to pass through the data set, it is still not perfect. So now regression. This is where we are going. Now, if you look at that, look at all the things, all the experiments we have performed on our data set before we now begin to talk about the regression. Most people just jump straight away, bars to regression and begin to compute their model and then bring it to the, to the department to come and present. And at the end of the day, you now find out that it will be full of errors. So for you, for your set, for you not to uh, fall victim of such, it is important for you to be quick so that you know what to do at a point in time. Even the guy outside there who is waiting for to who is waiting to assist you to do your analysis may not necessarily know some some of these precautions may not necessarily know that it is important for him to perform all these operations before subjecting your data sets or your data to regression analysis so that's why this is important for you so regression analysis is a form of predictive modeling technique which investigates relationship between a dependence or target variable and independent variable or variables. We also call them predictors. Do get that? It's a predictive modeling. It's waiting to predict just to gather, gather your data sets and then beyond, because what we normally do in analysis in different people in Nigeria. You cannot country. You can only sample a certain strata of that population. Why? Because of a number of constraints. So when you now have that strata which you want to uh, uh, analyze, you then want to be able to use that strata, that particular sample of the population, to generalize for the rest of the places you have not covered. So that's what it means. So Regression analysis will assist you is a predictive modeling that can assist you to project, to predict. If I let me tell you, the, I think the last source we had in this country, I think the official one was 2006, if I'm not mistaken. And now then do we know, and the thing that as at that time, the total population of Nigeria was 150 million. And then how do we then forecast the population now? Because they have not gone out again to conduct another census. The assumption for the total population of Nigeria now, which stood at about 200 million as of 2020, was done by predictive modeling using regression analysis based on the existing data. They used existing data to predict what the size of the population of the country should look like in a given year. So that is the strength of regression for you. So it's a form of predictive modeling technique which investigates relationship between a dependent variable and an independent variable, which is a predictor. So the technique is used for forecasting, like I said, time series modeling and finding the causal effects relationship between two variables. What is causal effects? Causal effect has to do with, oh, if I eat bread, if I buy bread, there's a likelihood that you must buy butter. Because those two uh, products are complementary products. There's a likelihood that if I buy a motorbike, that I will buy, I must buy what? Petrol. There's also a likelihood that if I buy generator, I must buy petrol. The same thing in predictive modeling means there are other variables or other names which authors may decide to use. Some may decide to use SSA. When they say response variable or stimulus variable, what does it mean? What is the outcome variable? And then uh, covariance. Cover 
strength to you. So this is what it means. Those are alternative names that you can use to refer to as dependent variable. Dependent variable is the one that will respond when you touch it. You know, if you are going out now, you are going somewhere and somebody just touch you, what will you do to respond? You respond to that stabilizer. What is that saying is that that touch is an external variable. That touch is an external variable. Somebody can slap you as well. When somebody slaps, what will you do? You also respond. That's another one. So you that that uh, variable that is responding, it is that is responding to activities from all sides is referred to as dependent variable. It is also the explained variable, variable that is being explained by other variables. It is also referred to as the regress sand or the response variable or the endogenous variable or the ask come variable. Because at the end of the day, <clears throat> when you had when you are making your stew, you have to add maggi, tomatoes, uh, pepper, salt. What else again? And at the end of the day, what do you expect? You are expecting sweetness in your stew. So all those things you are putting together are referred to as the independent variable. They are not the outcome. The entire outcome that you are expecting from that thing you have put together is your dependent variable, which is the entire outcome. So meaning that your independent variables could be many of them contributing to impacting a single one or impacting another one. So independent variables could be explanatory variable, it could also be called predictor, it could also be called regressor, you can also refer to it as stimulus or exogenous variable or covariate or control variable. Now, why regression? There are a number of regression analysis that can be performed. We're going to see a few of them today and then we'll continue again from there. There are multiple fields of regression analysis and some of which are uh, by uh, itemized and other ones other reasons why we need regression analysis are skipped is it indicates the significant relationship between dependent variable and independent variable it indicates whether there is significance, whether there is significance or not. It's the strength of parts of multiple events. The strength in variable definitely be different from what you would get from um, from um, Adekoju. It will also be different from what you're going to get from um, Oluchi, Oluchuku. It's also different from what you're going to get from um, uh, Festa and a number of people like that. So it is the same thing is also applicable here in regression analysis. When you have pulled all your variables together, you subject them to regression analysis, there is a likelihood that each of the contributions of those variables will differ. One may carry 0 0.3 and another one may carry 0 0.3 and 0 0.3. To say that, oh, okay, where you want to influence in the way I have money that is cost. That's a variable. It could also be because um, uh, it is so important for me because I have to use it to teach myself. It could be because I'm now bring all these variables together and regress them. You now want to check what we're expecting, which is the use of my mobile phone. Which of those values, which of those factors are influencing it more? That is what I can say. So regression analysis also allows us to compare the effects of variables measured on different scales. So um, some.
such as price changes and the number of promotional activities. What do you think our turnover should be in the next one or two years? We want to forecast. Ordinarily you, ordinarily, you cannot just forecast from your egg. You have to think about um, factors that may possibly influence your sales. So there can be a hundred of factors or drivers that affect sales. In this case, sales is the dependent variable. So the, the outcome variable here, which we want to check, is our sales with our outcome variable, are referred to as independent variables. So, and then begin to bring those factors together. Oh, for us to make more money, for us to make more sales, then our customer relationship must be improved. Upon, that's one. And then to what is, again, can make our sales to be better, then we have to ensure that we lower our sales, we have to improve on IMO and the website of your product the more. Uh, a number of other factors. So when you now bring all those factors together, you can then regress them with the purpose of knowing which one will impact sales the more. So, uh, answer, the analysis would help you to solve this problem, like I said. It has to answer the following questions. Which of the drivers or factors have the answer? And then which is the most important factor of all all these factors so that because the reason why you need the most important factor to know the, the most important factor that will improve your sales is because so that you can improve on that you can intensify more effort on that if it is has to do with your customer relationship then you know that you have to improve on that you have to ensure that your customers are taken care of that is why in some organizations they believe that customer is king when you get to a place you want to buy a thing, do you see the way they will treat? Oh, you're welcome. Please, can you please take a seat? I thank all. Thank you. You're welcome. Please, do you care for a glass of water? Or you do prefer Coca-Cola or Pepsi? Things like that. They follow or take care of you. So that is why they don't just take that decision. They take that decision or based on the information they have gathered from the field. Hi, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. Click on the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel and in my next video, I'm going to be talking about types of regression, linear regression, multiple regression, binary logistic, among others. So click on the subscribe button to subscribe. Cheers.